This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043. Charlie Starr from Blackberry Smoke is with us. The new album from the band, You Hear Georgia. And uh, I see on the website there is actually a concert, a thing called a concert happening at Pier 17 here in New York City, July 27th. All the info on the new album and the tour dates, blackberrysmoke.com. And Charlie, for that show at uh, Pier 17 on the East River here in NYC, outside on the roof, great venue. Now, is this show and the other shows on your tour, is it a definite or is it still like wait and see? I'm saying definite. I'm, I'm, uh, that's the way we speak it into existence. I, well, okay, I hear you. So, well, well we're psyched about that and we're really yeah. psyched about this new album. Congratulations. Well done. Um, you Hear Georgia is the name of the new album. Uh, another Georgian uh, by the name of Dave Cobb, uh, he helped you out on uh, some production of the new album. He's a pretty hot producer right now. But, you know, the last two albums, you and the band produced them yourself. So what does a guy like Dave, you know, bring to the table as opposed to just you and the band producing? Well, you know, he's a wealth of knowledge about sounds and tones and, you know, production value. Um, but we we had been speaking with him off and on for a couple of years about making a record. And he's very, very busy, as you know. But uh, he he would call, like he called we we had just finished the Like an Arrow album like two days before. And he called and was like, ready to make a record? And I said, we just, <laughs> we just made one. And he's like, oh, damn it. OK, well, next one. And I said, OK, so the next one I called him and he was like, I have no opening you know, not for a year. So we went ahead and made Find a Light. And then this one, we just got ahead of it. And uh, he was like, I really want to make a record. And I said, I, I do too. Let's do it. So we planned to go in in early or mid-March 2020. And of course, we all know what happened in mid-March. So we all went home and he and I stayed in touch. And uh, after a couple of months, he was like, you know what? I think we can do this. Um, I think we can go in and you know, stay away from each other. And at that point, everybody was still terrified, you know? Right. Yeah. And we did RCA is really big. The room up there at studio a is huge. So we just spaced ourselves out and nobody got sick and we made a record. You know, there's always discussion about whether Blackberry smoke and you've heard this forever is a rock band, a Southern rock band, a country band, but you know, uh, with this album, you've got all three genres covered. Uh, definitely rock, you know, the guitars are nice and loud, uh, definitely Southern rock. You got Warren Haynes playing, singing and co-writing, um, the song all rise again. And I distinctly heard a pedal steel guitar on the song lonesome for a living featuring Jamie Johnson on vocals. And man, is that ever a classic country song? Oh, well, thank you. Well, we do our best to confuse. <laughs> <laughs> But it's great. I mean, Jamie Johnson, though, what a voice. I mean, that had to be so much fun for you guys to record that. It was in, it was incredible. Um, his voice is just like molasses. You know, it's it's just deep and rich. And he's an incredible artist. And he brought Cowboy Eddie Long um, to play the steel. Um, and Eddie, he's a legend, you know. Um, I think most battle steel players, when you mention his name, they're like, yeah, yeah, he's uh He's one of the greats. Um, it was just a great thing um, to be able to include friends and, you know, musicians, especially like Warren, you know, he's a giant in our, in our genre, if you will. Um, he's just there. He's one of a kind. Um, you know, I read a quote from Rolling Stone, which sort of made me nod my head in agreement. Uh, Blackberry smoke is part of a lineage that shares a love of Tom Petty the Allman Brothers Band, Leonard Skinner and Hank Williams Jr., able to ride an American vibe or peel off a stomping riff and tie it all together without a hint of pre pretense. And, you know, I would also add The Grateful Dead, too, because uh, one song on the new album reminded me of the Dead's cover of Ico Ico. That is the song Hey Delilah. Uh, that is not a cover of the Plain White Tees song, by the way. It's, <laughs> it's got the same yeah. name, but it's a brand new song. Um, tell me about that one. Well, that one is definitely, uh, it's got that new Orleans thing, you know, and, uh, 
this, the lyrics, um, I was just sitting around thinking, you know, I grew up in the Bible belt and, um, grew up, you know, going to church and being scared as a kid. <laughs> if you do that, the devil's going to get you. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the good old Samson and Delilah story always fascinated me because I thought, well, it was a bummer as a kid. Cause I'm like, don't, don't cut your hair. Don't, don't, no, no. You know? And, uh, that's, it really is like a tragic love story. Like he knows she's a bad girl, but he's, but he's in love, you know, uh, she's got him. And so he finally tells her, he's like, all right, if you cut my hair, I lose all my power. And she did and he dies, but you know, he takes all the bad guys down with him. Anyway, that, that story's always been fascinating. And I just kind of updated it a bit and gave Delilah a drug habit and a cell phone and, <laughs> and, a, and a new Orleans groove. And that's it. Uh, fantastic. You know, we were talking about Warren Haynes before you guys have known each other a long time. Uh, the song with him all rise again, that's, I would say that's a pretty timely title as we are, you know, cautiously optimistic about, you know, returning to some sense of normalcy. And, you know, for people like you and Warren, a, a sense of normalcy means let's get back on that magic bus and, you know, finally play some shows, you know? Yeah, totally. We, uh, we were on the phone one night uh, talking about a guitar that was for sale and um, he, uh, Warren's a night owl. It was really late. And um, he said, man, I've been writing so many songs written more songs in two months than I have in two years, just because I can't leave my house. You know, this was back in early April. And I said, yeah, me too. I'm, I'm um, uh, write, writing as well, writing for a new record, you know, and we decided to write some together. And that's the first one that we wrote. And I was so proud just to write music with Warren Haynes, you know, I'm honored to be a part of it. And uh, I really love the way it turned out. And Dave Cobb, uh, I made a demo of the song and sent it to him. And he said, Oh God, I love it. And we got into the studio to record it. And it, it's got this big groove, you know, and this big riff. And he said, we got to have Warren on it. And do you think he would play on it? And um, I asked him if he would, he said, yeah, can I sing on it too? And I said, absolutely. <laughs> Please. <laughs> yeah, man, he's got it. He has got a big old voice too, right? Yeah. I mean, he just cuts right through it. Uh, you know, this album um, you hear Georgia, I mean, it just, to me anyway, it sounds like it's meant to be played in front of a live audience. I mean, I listen to it and I can see it and I can hear it, you know, being played at, you know, Pier 17 or whatever venue Blackberry Smoke is uh, uh, playing at. Do you, do you get that vibe too? It seems like, you know, it's a studio record, but it just seems to be meant to be played live. I do. I do. And we've been doing some outdoor shows already and playing some of the songs as they are released we're, I like to hold on to them until people have heard them, you know, or heard the recording. Um, but it's just, it feels just fantastic to play them live. And it, I mean, the record is live anyway. We always record, you know, live on the floor, but this one was especially, it's raw, you know, it's, um, Dave was really good at capturing the moment. Um, you Hear Georgia is the title of the new album from Blackberry Smoke. The title track uh, I'm wondering, Charlie, were you sitting around one day, perhaps, you know, ruminating or even listening to, you know, Ray Charles, Almond Brothers, Otis Redding, James Brown, Little Richard, R.E.M., Gladys Knight. I mean, the list goes yeah. on and on. Um, so you hear Georgia. Tell me about the title of the album and that song. Well, it kind of is all encompassing. It's exactly what you just said. Um, it touches on that idea. It's kind of a broad stroke. But what actually inspired the first line of the song is I was sitting here at the house one morning having coffee and my wife had the news on and uh, there was a guy being interviewed um, and he had a very, very thick Southern accent and it was very serious what they were talking about, but it made me smile. And I thought, I wonder if people hear what he's saying or just how he says it. And then that sort of opened up a whole can of worms in my brain about how people you know, they have a tendency to judge you by how you speak or how you look or how you, how you, or where you're from or how you dress, you know, and it's just such a mistake you can make. Like I've got a good friend that is, he talks like a hillbilly, but you know, he's, he's brilliant. And I thought, don't judge him by the way he tells you howdy, cause you'll be wrong. <laughs> um, and then, and then it was just like, 
the whole idea of you here, Georgia, kind of wrapped around that and about the whole idea of fighting with people about it. You know, it's like, I'm done with that. I'm over it. I'm, I'm, I don't have the heart to fight about it anymore. And it's like, if you really hear Georgia and that, you know, in that idea is exactly what you said, Ray Charles and little Richard and the Allman brothers band and Otis Redding. And it's just, it's just a beautiful thing. I read somewhere that uh, you recently said, you know, Listen, you, all you guys, you, you can talk about politics and religion all you want. I'm just going to be over here listening to Van Halen. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, which leads me, I, I know we talked about this briefly before the interview st started. We are on a Zoom with Charlie Starr of Blackberry Smoke. Um, but the people listening on the radio cannot see the guitars uh, behind you. They will see it when we post the interview later. But tell me about uh, you have what looks like behind you an Eddie Van Halen guitar. Uh, tell me about that guitar and then how you came to uh, own it. Yeah, it's an EVH um, model, the Frankenstein replica. And uh, I bought it uh, a day or so after Eddie passed. And uh, I saw a post of one and, and I was aware of them that they, they made a few different ones. They made the, uh, the unchained guitar that's like got the, circles and stripes on it. And then this Frank Frankenstein one, and then a 5151, um, Eddie's company, I guess. I think Fender has something to do with actually making the guitars, but I'm not exactly sure about that. But anyway, the day after he passed and my wife and I were watching the news and we're both crying, you know, and my son who is seven, my youngest son, he's like, what's wrong? You know, he didn't understand. And I said, well, this guy was like, so important when we were kids, the music that he made, not only his guitar playing, but his songwriting, you know, and the, and the, he and, and David Lee Roth, you know, just, uh, that's my jam, you know, and, uh, it was, I, it's an, uh, an odd thing. I never met him, but he had such a profound impact on guitar players like me, especially from my generation. He was the guy, you know, and I don't know, maybe it was something about his personality and his smile, but it was so sad. My wife started crying first and then I fell apart and then, <laughs> you know, but I had to get it. I, I thought, well, they'll probably go fast and I'm sure they'll make more, but I, I want one just to, just to, uh, you know, remember my, remember uh, old Ed. Well, he was like, uh, I like to call him, you know, the Mozart of the electric guitar. I mean, if you, you know, if you take him and Jimi Hendrix and Jeff Beck, I mean, you know, I mean, the rest are just, you know, they're all great, but you know, no, he, he is up in that stratosphere for sure. Yeah. Um, and now I want to get an Eddie Van Halen guitar. <laughs> I heard Alice Cooper say it, but he, he put it best in my opinion. Um, he said, you know, there are tons of guitar players tons and tons and tons that just can play circles around people. It just, you know, their, their technical proficiency is through the roof, but Eddie Van Halen, I mean, not only was he such a trailblazer in that regard, but he tied all that in to a fantastic song. That's what, that's why, that's why we talk about him and maybe not as much about some super shredders. It's like, well, they didn't write Panama, you know, it's like, Oh, oops. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. It's it's not only you know the virtuosity, but it's just uh, it's the song that it's the songs that he wrote and you know arranged you know with the other guys in the band. And then you know, did you did you ever get to see Van Halen live? I never did. No. Oh man. Well, you've seen the videos where it's like you, as you said before, he's just smiling all the time and just you know playing these riffs from outer space that no one can ever play and smiling. And yeah. smoking a cigarette at the same time, you know, just. My friend Keith Nelson from formerly of Buck Cherry, he saw Van Halen in 84 with, with Roth, the last tour with Roth. And he said, you know, a funny thing. He said, I, I went to see a band in 1990 or so, uh, another band that was, um, that was huge. And he said, I remember seeing that band and thinking, that's what I want to do right there. But he said, but if I look back on it, when I saw Van Halen in 84, there's no way in a million years I would think I could ever do that. <laughs> Just the scope of it. It was so huge. It's like, that's the thing. Dream, that's what dreams are made of. You know, his name is Charlie star, the band Blackberry smoke and the excellent new album. Everyone should go out and get it. It's called you here, Georgia, and they are coming our way. Finally, we love it. Pier 17 here in the city, 
July 27th. All the info, blackberrysmoke.com. Charlie, always a pleasure. I'm going to be at that show, man. I can't wait to see you guys just shred away the night. Yeah, I can't wait. It's, it's, it's time. Charlie, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Talk soon. All right. This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043.